Enabling the Software Defined Vehicle Revolution. Welcome. I'm Andrea Gallo. I'm Vice President of Business Development at Linaro. In these few minutes, we will uh, go through the key concept of Software Defined Everything, the disruption of the Software Defined Vehicle Revolution and the implications and challenges. And we will briefly go through the open source projects ongoing at Linaro that provide an open source implementation. In 1870s, the first mechanical calculators were introduced. When I was a kid, an old aunt of mine jealously kept one of those mechanical calculators. And I was so much fascinated by the magic of this little box. And I was just turning the wheel and it was cranking out the results of uh, sums, multiplications, subtractions. In 1964, Giorgio Perotto introduced the first electronic programmable desktop calculator made out of discrete transistors. It had registers, an accumulator, a small instruction set. It even had a small magnetic postcard. That's the ancestor of our old floppy disk. In 1971, Federico Fagin designed the first integrated microprocessor in the world, the Intel 4004. This year, ARM is celebrating their 30th anniversary. Actually, it was 36 years ago, in 1985, that Steve Felber and Sophie Wilson powered up the very first ARM-1 microprocessor. In 100 years, from mechanical calculators to the first ARM-1 processor. What an amazing journey. On the software side, the first concept of virtualization was introduced in 1974 by Gerald Popek and Robert Goldberg. In 2010, only 11 years ago, we had the first OpenStack release by Rackspace and NASA. Software defined everything means that we replace mechanical functions with discrete software functions, software as a service, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, network virtualization, cloud computing, edge computing. This is everywhere. And the next is software defined vehicles. In the car today, we have between 100 and even 150 discrete electronic control units. And the technology today from the cloud, from the servers, allows to have the same performance in one single server chip. So we have the possibility of integrating 100 or 150 electronic control units into one single server processor. And on the software side, this means 100 or 150 different independent firmware images, all running on the same platform. There are a lot of implications. Let's go through them one by one. The first one is virtualization. We need a hypervisor to run all these images, independent images, in one single server platform. And so the first implication is that the uh, ECU firmware image shall use different, uh, different device drivers. Device drivers provided by the hypervisor, which then run on the real hardware, but they emulate the hardware used in the old ECU firmware image. If you have different server, automotive server platforms, then a hypervisor vendor shall support multiple different servers, so shall provide the, their hypervisor implementation for each server chip. And if a car manufacturer wants to support multiple hypervisors, then they shall adapt each ECU firmware to each hypervisor. So there are a lot of combinations, different hypervisors, different server platforms, and we should do the software integration and verification for each combination. That's a huge cost. We need to find ways of reducing this. Second implication is the communication between ECUs. Automotive Ethernet is the term that is the most used. ECUs in a, in a car, they communicate over a physical bus. It can be the old CAN bus or the new Ethernet, automotive Ethernet. But when this is transferred to a software defined vehicle, when this becomes, this runs in an automotive server, then each ECU is in a VM. 
And so the communication is between sensors, zonal gateways, and each VM, or between different VMs. And so we need a solid and reliable communication technology between VMs. Uh, there, there's a second implication, that's the timing. When we have sensors connected to ECUs, the timing requirements, the latency of the solution comes directly from the physical interface, the, the Ethernet and the uh, TSM technology. But when this runs in an automotive server, then there is additional latency coming from the uh, host platform, the hypervisor, the kernel, and then the additional latency from the software running in each virtual machine. So the um, the implications, the, the software layers to transverse are growing and this is a problem that needs to be investigated. When you have all these different software images on the same platform, the software will not stay still for the lifetime of a car. There will be updates, updates during the design, updates during the production, updates during the usage when the car is used by their uh, customers. We are used to our phones and computers and tablets and electronic gadgets to receive updates. We should expect the same for our cars. But while we can expect to reboot a phone or a computer, maybe sometimes in very rare cases an upgrade may fail or stall due to any compatibilities, we, have, we may have to restart the process. This is by far not even conceivable in a car. We cannot park the car on a side and reboot it or remain stuck because an upgrade failed. So over there updates in a software defined vehicle shall always work, be reliable and secure. How are we addressing all this at Linaro? At Linaro, we are a member-driven organization. We enable new markets through collaborative engineering, from tiny IoT and smart sensors to edge computing, clock computing, high-performance computing, and smartphones. We work with the lead partners in the ARM ecosystem. We are proud of the number of open-source maintainers that work for Linaro. We are proud of the number of patches that are submitted and accepted every month in the open source projects. By the level of testing that we run every day, every week, every month on, on the projects. Let's look at the uh, multiple open source projects running at Dinaro that fit the software defined vehicle revolution. And let's go through the list of the problems that we have just uh, we have just described. So first of all, the uh, hypervisor and the, virtual, the virtualization concept. At Linaro, we are working on uh, project Stratus. We have identified Virtio as the interface, the standardized interface that all hypervisor shall, shall comply with to provide device drivers to the virtual machines. If all hypervisors adopt the same, then the ECU software ported on Vertio will run on any hypervisor. And the second step is if every hypervisor adopts the same standards for the backend, the implementation for the uh, server platform underneath, then every server chip vendor can implement this specific backend just once and it will work with heavy hypervisor. So we are trying to simplify all these combinations, providing, uh, selecting, adopting, and implementing the standard interfaces into the VM for the ECU software, and helping each hypervisor vendor run with uh, multiple uh, servers without having to redo the work every time. Uh, these are some of the examples of the Vertio device interfaces that we have been working on. The next implication that we listed is the uh, automotive Ethernet, the communication between ECUs. So we said that in a software-defined vehicle, the communication happens between VMs. And the VM-to-VM communication using Vertio 
will then be implemented by the hypervisor platform underneath. So every ECU will communicate with another ECU through the hypervisor without knowing how the hypervisor would implement this. Is this secure? Is this reliable? We are delegating this to each uh, hypervisor to provide the best uh, implementation. So what if, what if we define together an, a reference implementation with key requirements in terms of security and reliability? What if we use the trusted execution environment, the security of the underlying platform, the trust zone technology to establish some secure handshake between the virtual machines before they can start communicating. So maybe this can be a way for each hypervisor to expose the right capabilities so that um, each ECU through Vertio can ensure that the infrastructure, the communication infrastructure underneath is secure and reliable thanks to the secure handshake. It's an area that we want to investigate. We think it's worth the effort. The next implication to analyze is time-sensitive networking. The latency in the communication between ECUs, the latency of communication between sensors and each ECU when this is ported to virtual machines. So here, uh, as, I, as we, we have seen, there are multiple software layers that are added. It's not just the latency coming from the physical bus, but all the software layers of the kernel and then the application level. So we have selected the uh, AFXDP, the Express Data Path technology. Uh, this is a technology that uh, allows to uh, manage packets depending on the timing requirements. Non-critical packets can continue being handled by the kernel as is today in Linux, while time-sensitive networking packets, they will go through this Express Data Path and be di directed immediately to the application that is managing them. We have measured the improvement uh, from AFXDP on the same platform with the same um, workload. We have seen an improvement from an end-to-end -end improvement from about 200 microseconds without AFXDP down to only two microseconds with our implementation of AFXDP for time-sensitive networking. What needs to be done is that what we have measured is up to user space in the host. But now the applications are running in a VM. So there's an additional layer by the hypervisor, a layer introduced by the OS running inside the VM, and then latency to go up to the user space in the VM. So we need to extend the uh, Express Data Path technology for TSN from host into the VMs. This is what that needs to be done, help us. The next topic that we have seen is the implication of supporting multiple different chips, multi, multiple different platforms, multiple different software layers. Uh, this is where Linaro is teaming up with ARM. We are endorsing the recently announced ARM SOFI initiative, the service-oriented architecture framework for the embedded edge. ARM has released a very detailed software architecture, well-defined, and Linaro is working very closely with ARM to integrate all the technologies that we have just described, Vertio, time-sensitive working, OPTE, security at large, into the, we're integrating all these into the base layers to provide the first open source implementation of SOFI with ARM. We discussed over the updates and uh, how important it is to have a secure, reliable software update and secure platform at large. This is where we are working on our trusted substrate. It's a collection of firmware components for the bootloader, the root of trust, over the update, secure services at runtime. All these firmware are all integrated and tested together, complying with the ARM system ready standards, and they are being integrated in a minimal Yocto based reference Linux platform that is then used as the basis for ARM SOFI. All this is tested 
in our test farm, in our CI CD environment, and we tested for every Linux kernel release. And this is all thanks to our Linaro Linux kernel functional testing project, LKFT. We have multiple uh, long term support stable kernels, multiple uh, platforms, multiple uh, software images being tested 24 7. The last area of work is functional safety. Um, the uh, firmware images running in the ECU, they may have uh, safety requirements. When they run in a VM, the safety requirements in each ECU will still be responsibility of the firmware vendors. But what about the implications coming from running these in a hypervisor, running these on top of the trust substrate, the implications of running this functional safety firmware on top of the OPTE. So we need to understand the implications of, of introducing OPTE, trust zone, uh, the trusted firmware and trusted substrate in a functional safety uh, application and solution. So we ran a workshop a few months ago. We have identified the areas of work that needs to be accomplished if we want to comply with the functional safety standards and engage with us uh, if you want to help. This is uh, the overall uh, summary of what we have been discussing. I refer to it as the implication graph. It goes from left to right, from the key drivers of the software-defined vehicle disruption, the problems that need to be solved to have a software-defined vehicle implementation, the implications that come with these technologies, so hypervisor and supporting multiple hypervisors and Vertio as the solution. Uh, communication between ECUs and then automotive Ethernet and then maybe uh, a virtual Ethernet and an Opti implementation, time-sensitive networking and AFXDP and then AFXDP in a VM, uh, standards in firmware and bootloader and OTA updates, standards in the platform, all these together lead to the solution that is, in our mind, the Ledge reference platform, the Ledge trusted substrate as a collection of open source technologies, reference open source technologies, that can be integrated within the ARM SOFI initiative. And altogether, this provides the basis for the car makers and the software integrators and the TS1 to run and develop the software-defined vehicle of the future, the cloud-native way as it is being done today in the cloud and in the service. The message that I would like you to take away from this short talk is that Linar is working very closely with ARM to enable the software-defined vehicle revolution. ARM with SOFI is providing the reference architecture to run cloud-native applications in an automotive server. Linar and ARM are working together to provide the first open source, secure, reliable reference implementation of SOFI for software defined vehicles. Get involved with us, help us progress. Refer to the links uh, at the bottom of this page to get engaged with our projects. Thank you.